Hey there, Ryan Falcon Ryan here, set pace for Athlon.com. Let me see my microphone so you can hear me better. What we are going to talk about on this video is the spectator plan for 7.3 Des Moines. Where do your spectators need to be in order to see you do your race or just kind of get the best experience possible out there for them? So we're going to kind of go over the course maps and we're going to take a look at kind of the best place I would suggest for your spectators to be. Now, if you don't know the layout, here is Cal's Commons. So this right here is where the race finishes. This is where uh, check-in is. This is where the Iron Man Village is. This is where the uh, Iron Man stores are at. This right here in Waterworks. This is where Transition is at. And Grays Lake is where the storm is at. So that's just kind of your layout uh, for where kind of most of the race hot spots are going to be and where you need to be. So for the swim, you're going to start with your athletes in race day. Parking's going to be over here. Now, be ready. It's going to be a 15 to 20 minute walk. Now, if you want to spend a little bit extra money and get that VIP pass, over here you get to park at the Waterworks headquarters here. So instead of having to park on Bell Avenue Business Center, I'm walking 15 to 20 minutes to get down to transition. Park right here and just walk over to a little grass berm and there you are. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, pay for one VIP experience and then you get a car in there to park. So maybe you buy that pass and just use it for parking for a car. Maybe that's worth it to you. You got four or five spectators coming with you. So they don't have to hike all the way over here. And for athletes, it's kind of nice. Get your stuff in transition, bring it over here and take your car instead of having to walk it up through a drive and back to this business center because that's where they're going to let you park. So, let's see you're there. Got everything ready to go. This is where the swim starts going to be. This is where transition is at. So they are going to have you athletes walk down this little pathway and then underneath the pitch and then all through these little roads over here to the swim start. So this is a nice little beach area. There's going to be plenty of porta potties, plenty of space for people and spectators to kind of hang out and watch the whole thing unfold. Now be ready. There's a bridge over here and there's a lot of people hanging out here, but this is going to be a little bit of a hike if you want to watch what's going on and then be over here when your athlete comes out of the water. Because the start and the finish are in two different spots and athletes are going to have to run this little piece of concrete you know, underneath the bridge and back to transition. So. This was pretty packed with people lining the the uh, gates and everything um, when they gated off so the athletes can run down the uh, pathway to get to transition. So if you want to watch the swim start, I think you'd have plenty of time to watch it over here and then walk the little trails and come back over here and see your athlete come out of the water. Uh, personally for me, it's been about 39 minutes. I'm not the fastest of swimmers, but I'm not the slowest of swimmers. So if your swimmer is quick and they can do it in 30 minutes or less, I think you could make that in a pretty good pace, pretty good walk from here to here and get that and be able to see that as far as my fingers go. Now, if you don't really necessarily, it's not that big of a deal to see him go in or, or exit, you can count, there's, like I said, plenty of people along this bridge here. Um, there's some parks over here with some playground areas. Uh, can't remember off the top of my head, you know, like, there's plenty of beach areas, so spectators could be hanging out here if you have little kids or whatever that can play in the sand. Um, I do believe there's like a little playground over here for, for kids and stuff and entertain themselves. So I think that would be a good spectator area. Swim start was great. There are plenty of areas, plenty of space for spectators. The exit was great too. Plenty of places for people to line the course. There's trees, there's, like, there's already benches and, and parks and, and stuff and uh, seats and tables and kind of some stuff over here. But it'd also be a great area if you just set up a lot chair and just kind of watch people run by. So that would be a good area because once they exit the bike, they're going to come up here. So go to the bike course. So once they hop out, they're going to hop on this little road out here. That's not a really good view. But they're going to hop on this road right here and hit the main course. So if you want to see them, you can stand here. There's spectators here. Um, but I think you get the most bang for your buck. And maybe if you, they close down Florida Drive. So maybe if you want to catch them in the swim start, catch them in the swim exit, you can kind of hurry it up over here and catch them as they come out of transition because this is a little bit of hike and then you get the transition get your bike ready and they come out of here. So maybe if you're quick about it and you don't have uh, kids kind of hold you down or if you can drag them along with you as quick as possible, maybe this is a little spot to catch people as they come on a bike. 
now for the bike course. 2021, they had to shorten it because of weather, so we only did 27.3, and they came out for this little road, cut off this U, U turn, cut off this U turn, and came out, and did a U turn here, and came back. Now, there's plenty of uh, opportunities. Um, as long as you stay on this side of, you know, you're going to have to watch out and be careful. Um, if you want to drive, you probably do not want to cross the course, but there's opportunities that if you want to drive over here and come over somewhere and catch the bike, you know, catch your, your athlete kind of right on the course, you probably could, but remember, the parking. If you're going to come out here and you're going to try to catch your car and you're parked over here at the business center, it's a 15 to 20 minute walk to get there. 15 to 20 minutes back. So, I, my recommendation would be find a place, watch them start, watch them come out, try to catch them on the bike, then hang out, pay attention to Ironman Tracker, and then come back. <clears throat> and when they come back and exit, they come back in transition. And then this is a place where you can catch them come out on the run. So, we exit. The athletes do, they come out underneath here, they come out a little bridge, and they start running out of the park. So there's a little park area over here, there's a park area over here, there's the beach area over here, the porta potty. So if you have little kids, these areas are great. <clears throat> there's a little park area in here with little playgrounds, and, and they already have porta potties there, they got more for the athletes in the race. Uh, over here, this can get pretty congested. Um, it is an out and back, and it is a paved trail, yay wide. So you got Lots of athletes, lots of runners, you got walking people, you got running people, you got people trying to stretch and smack people in the face by accident. Saw that on the race day. Don't know if this would be the best spot. I mean, there's a little bridge underpass under here where you can kind of hang out and, and watch people run by. But again, you know, if you want to stay central, I would highly recommend staying kind of in this area. There's this nice little park area, set up, you know, set up shop. Maybe be right here, catch your athlete, come out on this part, and then do the U turn, they come back, there you can come back here. So you go back up here, they catch him, they go on out, go back, go on back, catch them again as they come back to do their second loop, and then that's when you can make a break for getting down to the, the finish line. Because um, there's trail systems that you can walk back in here and get back to the start. Again, this is going to be about a 2.2 mile um, little jaunt. So this may be a case where you know, you see your athlete come in from the bike and they hit transition and they come out and you catch them, say good job, pat on the butt as they run through, and then you're going to start heading down the course um, and walking along here, uh, depending on how fast your athlete is, and just hang out here because you can see them at the U-turn if you get here in time, uh, or maybe that's where you go just camp out. As soon as they leave the bike, then you head over here and you're camping out downtown, um, there's plenty of shops, there's plenty of places to eat. Um, they got Ironman Village over there. They were packing stuff up, so you can't really get much there. But there's restaurants and stuff downtown, so you can kind of hang out here. You can have food, you can have drinks. There's shade from the buildings if it's hot like it was. I need to do degrees in 2021. So, you know, just kind of pick where you want to hang out. You know, if you're quick and you're an athlete and you think you can beat your athlete to the finish line, maybe you catch them here when you come out of uh, T2 and start to run, and then you're heading on your way back over here. Uh, like I said, there's some trail systems that you can walk in here. I don't know if Google Maps will show them as well. So this is a little road that uh, we kind of cross doing the trail system. So the trails kind of come along here and then we cross over and then we hit the road, but you can cross the trail system. I am looking for, I've got a few little bridges and stuff over the river, um, but if you want to catch your athlete at the finish line, um, maybe when they head out for the bike, is when you kind of start trekking this way. <clears throat> or like I said, maybe you catch them when they come out on the run, and then they're going to be doing two loops, so come out, you'll be able to see them at this U-turn, or you'll be able to see them at the finish line, so maybe that's where you came out. But in this park, <clears throat> this area here, once you get to the park, there's enough buildings that cause enough shade that you can find a nice shady spot. Um, over here where this aid station was, it's kind of in between buildings, so there's a park over here. There's plenty of places, wide open space, plenty of opportunities, wide sidewalks to set up a chair to watch people, uh, cheer people on. There's uh, plenty of space along the finish line, finishing shoot. There's plenty of opportunities along here to catch athletes. So, you know, if you want to catch them on the finish line, I would focus on that getting over from transition over there. It's about 2.2 miles, so that might take you a little bit of time to get over there. Um, I think that's more important than maybe seeing them on a T2, but if you're quick and you can beat them there on their two loops, they can do 32.1 miles and you can do 
two, faster than they can do 13.1, hey, you know, maybe you should catch them on a T2, and you come over here and catch them with the finish line. Um, and, you know, while you're walking, they may be catching you while you're walking out, and they're doing their first loop. So, I think this little park here, if you want to set up shop, I, I kind of question if you would be able to go over to the finish line, this little park. It was pretty dead by the time that we got there. We we're doing the run. There's not much going on. It's a parking lot, four potties, and a little swim beach. Um, over here, there's lots of stuff going on because there's plenty of shade and trees. Um, once you get out of Slough Drive, it was pretty. You're in wide open sun, and it's a road, and it's not very conducive to people being on the side of the road. There's kind of hills and slope, grassy places, and then this is a bridge. So once you get past on Locust Street, then I think there's opportunities to kind of set up shop and, and be kind of positioned. And especially if you want to get closer right down here, there's plenty of space, plenty of space to set up shop and see people go by. So I think this little road down here, you go to Locust Street and then you know, we're on Court Avenue. I think that's a good place for your spectators to set up to see the finish line. This is a good spot to set up to see you come out of transition and then people just make their way up here. Um, like I said, for the swim start, I think the beach, you should be able to see them start, should be able to see them finish. Maybe if you're quick, you can see them head on the bike. On the bike, I don't know if I'd necessarily worry about it because, like I said, um, getting to where they have people park, it's a 15 or 20 minute one-way walk. I would kind of, if you're, if you're on the fence, I wouldn't worry about it when I not see them on the bike. Um, it should be a fairly faster bike course, so I would just worry about catching them out of the transition and then catching them at the finish line. Um, like I said, there's parks in here for little kids, there's restaurants and other stuff going on on here for food, for drinks. Um, there's like a little area in here. Uh, there's a little like playground over here. There's a couple little playgrounds over here. There's a playground over at the Swim Star area, but this is pretty, I guess, low key and kind of laid back for the race, so we won't have any people hanging out there. Um, but I would not, I kind of avoid this whole section for the spectators. Um, like I said, it's kind of tight with the athletes alone, and then you add the spectators, kind of it's even more tighter in this little area. I mean, this is a hot area right here. You can catch athletes coming in and going out a few times, but then if you want to see them at the finish line, it's going to be kind of hard logistics to get over there in time. I mean, it may be a good opportunity. Like I said, I, I can't find... I believe there is a bridge of some sort to get over back in the river to get over to the finish line in, in Cal's Commons, but I don't know if I would change that necessarily, but that'd be my recommendations. Spectators, swim start, swim exit, <clears throat> try to do over the transition. For the bike, meh, I wouldn't necessarily worry about it. For the run, set up in uh, right underneath the bridge, catch them as they're coming out, go over here, walk the path, you watch it for your spectators, watch the Ironman tracker, and then just see him at the finish line. There's, there's tons of opportunity. I would just avoid fluor drive as far as setting up for spectators. It's it's hot. It's um, when it's 92 degrees in 2021. It was just uh, carnage everywhere with cups and water and people just not feeling good. And then this bridge kind of sucked. Unless you want to cheer people off the bridge, make it feel good. Um, but other than that, that's that's my recommendations. Um, if you're looking to be a spectator. Once you're parked, I'd plan on not leaving. Uh, like I said, it's going to be a hike to get your car, get out, <clears throat> pack a lunch, bring your chair, um, and just plan on being self-sufficient while you're there. Uh, like I said, there's some restaurants and other things going on, so you have some opportunities to get some food, some drink. But uh, I just bring a cooler, bring a chair, park a car, and be there for the duration of the event. And then catch your athlete. Do remember that the athlete, the shuttles are for athletes only, so if you're at the finish line, you're still going to have to find a way to get yourself back in transition. So, just keep that in mind. Finish line, the shuttles are for athletes only, so you're not going to be able to get on there with your athlete to the finish line, or to the transition to pick up your stuff. Now, this may change in non-pandemic times, but this was the situation we had in 2021. Athletes only, so if you're at the finish line, you know, there's plenty of places to park, so maybe if you did want to go get your car and come over here, but then just realize you're going to come back over here and get all your stuff in your athlete. So, just keep that in mind. With that, it's kind of my high-level high overview of the spectator plan, what you should do for Des Moines uh, 70.3. got any questions, put them in the comments. I'll try to get to them. If you got any suggestions or anything like that, redo the video and add different things later on. So, just let me know. And with that, happy training. See you on next day.